In this age and time, I believe the only thing you can't order online is a husband. <laughs> Digitization is transforming the way we do business and also the way we manufacture. With the advent of Industry 4.0, some new keywords are coming into manufacturing, such as smart factory, cloud computing, 3D printing, Internet of Things. Today I'll be focusing on 3D printing. Additive manufacturing is the science word, and oftentimes people refer to it as 3D printing. This technology involves using computer-aided design object, a virtual object, to create a real object that you can hold in a layer-by-layer -layer deposition manner. I see on the screen there that a couple of different techniques under this 3D printing, from fused deposition modeling to laser powder bed fusion, direct energy deposition, so many of them, including bioprinting, have been explored by scientists to do different things in the manufacturing industry. Growing up in Nigeria, my mother, a farmer, on a daily basis, will trek for approximately 10 kilometers down, another 10 kilometers back home on a daily basis. Oftentimes when she gets home, she'll complain about the pain that she felt around her knee joint. On days when these pains happen to be excruciating, myself or one of my siblings will take what we call Chinese balm, a pain ointment, and help her just massage that area just to manage this. Just like my mom, Approximately 4.4 million Canadians suffer from osteoarthritis. So, what is osteoarthritis? This is a debilitating disease that happens when the articular cartilage covering the hands of our lung bones get to wear or tear. In the early stages of osteoarthritis, patients seem to oftentimes feel pain that are oftentimes managed by them taking analgesics, using pain ointment, and in extreme cases, when there is loss of locomotion or stiffness, they can't really move their leg properly, they may have to go through invasive surgery to replace the articular cartilage with either a plastic or a metal implant. In a country like Canada, where the life expectancy is up to 85 years, let's say a 40-year-old woman has gone through the surgery to replace their knee, that shows that they will have to go in for that surgery because this material oftentimes wear and tear after being in your knee for maybe 10 to 15 years. So they may have to go into that surgery maybe three to four times in their lifetime. You should ask me, why doesn't articular cartilage just grow back when it's damaged just like my skin? The reason for that is this biphasic tissue lacks blood supply despite having cells in it. So because of lack of blood supply, it does not regenerate. During my PhD thesis, I started wondering, I want to know more about this articular cartilage, and maybe my mom can stop complaining. As an engineer, what we do is we build things from scratch. So I started thinking maybe I can use living cells to build a tissue for my mother and many other people around the world who needs this help. So I employed one of those 3D printing techniques called 3D bioprinting. I decided that I was going to take some living cells and get some materials that are biocompatible called biomaterials, pass them through a 3D printer, and make a 3D scaffold. So I employed two types of materials, polycaprolactin, a polymer acting as a reinforcer, and then alginate hydrogel where I embedded the cells in a layer-by-layer -layer manner as seen on the screen there. I fabricated what I called 3D scaffold. So after making that, it mimics the biology of the native articular cartilage. And structurally, too, it does mimic the native articular cartilage. Now the question is, can the cells in this construct survive? If they survive, what would you do for them to be able to regenerate the articular cartilage? In the medical world, idea is also where we start from. But it goes from idea to preclinical trials to clinical trials to name a few till the end. This process may take up to 14 years, a couple of million dollars or billion dollars, I should say, 
And you know, 14 years is probably how many PhDs? Maybe three. So at least from that idea, we were able to create a proto the, the prototype, which is the scaffold. Then after making the scaffold, we decided to do the in vitro bench test. And uh, during this bench test, we offer the scaffold an environment that mimic the native articular cartilage, and that is an incubator. Over a 42-day period, we investigated the performance of the cells in the scaffolds and realized that over this 42-day period, the cells were not only viable, but they were creating their own extracellular matrix. Check, done. Stage two, we moved on and said, maybe if we implant these scaffolds into animals, maybe there'll be a change. Why is it important that we implant the scaffold in animals? As human beings, when we walk around, we load our cartilage, right? You're moving and exerting some pressure on your cartilage. That process is called me mechanotransduction. The cells in your cartilage, they need that mechanical stimuli for them to respond and produce what is necessary. So in the cultural environment, that didn't happen. It started. So putting these constructs in animal, we allow the cells to experience mechanotransduction. We went ahead, got some nude mice, implanted those constructs, and studied them for a few weeks. Also, we got good, good results. The cells were not only viable, they were making their own cartilage-specific extracellular matrix. To be precise, collagen type 2 and glycoaminoglycan. After those two stages got over, the next stage would be recruit some patients, right? That's not that easy. Just like me, several scientists around the world are using 3D bioprinting to investigate new tissues, how to generate new damaged tissues. In fact, some of them are pushing the boundaries and working on regenerating a whole organ that is damaged. What if we live in a world where someone who needs a new organ does not have to sign up and be on the organ donor list and wait for many years? What, is, what if in a matter of months, we can actually engineer that organ and put it back in them from their own cells? That all they need to do is go to the hospital, give us a pint of blood. From that blood, we take some cells from there, expand the cells to multiply, program the cells to become that specific cell that is needed in that tissue, and implant them in scaffolds. Culture that scaffold, put it back in that patient, their own cells, functioning as their own tissue. What if we have that? We will have less immune rejection. We'll send more people back to work. We'll spend more on managing our health care, right? Maybe my mom will not have to complain. We're walking towards this technology. In healthcare, 3D printing is being used for several things, from what I have just described to customization of maybe dental implants, prosthesis for arm and leg. 3D printing is making our life better. Not only are we using this technology in the healthcare industry, it has too many benefits that made it attractive to other industry as well. Some of these benefits I'd like to share include path consolidation. This technology allows us to match multiple parts into one single part and 3D print that. It also allows us to do what I call decentralization of manufacturing. Back home, on some occasions, when my father's car broke down, the mechanic would tell him that it would take about two to three weeks for them to get the parts to repair the car. What if on the shop floor of that mechanic, what if we can 3D print the needed part? What would that do? It will shrink the supply chain. 3D printing is allowing us to do that. Moving forward, design freedom. So many different parts that are complex and com com complicated that cannot be manufactured by conventional techniques are now being manufactured by 3D printing. As such, Topology have been, they have been optimized 
to help us enhance different things from structural integrity to reduction in energy consumption. 3D printing is allowing us to manufacture complex parts unlike before. Imagine going to an event as a woman and you have just spent $2,000 on your dress. On getting to that event, six other people are wearing the same type of dress. How would you feel? With the advent of 3D printing, I can customize my hearings and fabricate that by myself. So nobody else have that. That is not only useful in just consumable industry, it is useful a whole lot in healthcare and so, and so on and so forth. To cut the long story short, these benefits of 3D printing made it attractive to several industries, from aerospace to automotive, to space, to energy, to even the making of consumables like sneakers. 3D printing is being utilized. NASA announced in April that on their next mission, they are going to have 100 3D printed parts in their spacecraft. What does that tell you? 3D printing is not our future. It is our now. At my current role at Cummins, we are exploring metal 3D printing for automotive application. And very soon, some of those diesel engines may have some 3D printed part. Well, why am I talking about all of these things? It is important because I started with smart manufacturing. Growing up back in Nigeria, a manufacturing plant used to be a scary place, a place that looks like that, with fire, with the melt, melting, uh, molten metal, with things that are scary that women like myself wouldn't dare to go near those places. In this age and time, Industry 4.0 has brought smart manufacturing, smart factory into our, our manufacturing shop. Because of that, digital manufacturing allows somebody like me to be an additive manufacturing engineer wearing steel toe boots and standing in those shops on a daily basis doing what I love doing. As a woman, over the last 30 years, I realized that it took Canada 30 years to move the representation of women in STEM from 20% to 22%. Why did it take a country like Canada that is well vested in education to move by 2% representation of women in STEM? I couldn't answer that question, but I wanted to do something about it. So, I started STEM Hope Foundation. A STEM Hope Foundation, there are a few things that we do. One of them is to go into the community, especially those female-dominated community centers, those minority-dominated community centers, to showcase the beauty of science and hands on experiments and show these young people, young boys and girls, what an engineer looked like in the 24th century. This is what an engineer looked like. That they too can manufacture, they can innovate, that it can, if they can imagine it, they can design it, and they can leave it by 3D printing it. So I'm hoping that as we move forward in, in innovating and creating new ideas, there are more women like myself who are standing behind innovative technology will not only be eating figures, that they too will come out and talk about what they do. It's okay if you're nervous, because I am. But I decided that I would do more and talk about what I do. And not only talk about what they do, but also hold the hand of a fellow girl, a little girl trying to understand science or something and help these young girls to see why they should study STEM. I am very proud to be working for Commons, but that's not only what I'm here to talk about. I want to share one more story before I go. While growing up, my mom told me that age 18, a father withdrew out from school and gave her out in an arranged marriage because he thought education is for the boys. So when she had five of us, she would talk to me and my sisters specifically that the opportunity we have, she didn't have. That we have a choice and we can utilize that opportunity to our advantage. So every day I went to school, 
knowing fully well that I am more opportune than my mother. I know and I respect the fact that there are barriers limiting women in STEM, but I also know clearly that maybe those barriers hop ahead, maybe those ceilings are no longer metal. Maybe they went from being metal to becoming glass. Maybe we can move through the glass. Maybe we can push through the glass. As women, it is time to stop thinking that we can't do something. We can do a whole lot. I believe we all order stuff on our mobile phone. If you can do that, you can design something. And if you can do that, you can press a button on a 3D printer. Women have this natural artistic attribute. We are artists. We know how to put things together. Under 3D printing, one area is called design freedom. I believe women can use our artistic manner to utilize design freedom to bring to life new design that will optimize topology, that will help us advance manufacturing technology. And I'm very proud to be a manufacturing engineer, and I hope that it will not take us another 10 years in Canada to move 2%. That I hope that in 10 years, there'll be more representation of girls who are proud to wear red lipsticks and stiletto shoes and on a daily basis wear those steel toe shoes. Thank you.